Chapel Mission and Baptist Church. And as always, we are excited that you all have decided to join us for our virtual worship. Uh, simply by way of announcements, I just want to thank those sitting at homes who came in last Sunday and proxy for me and preached a powerful word that faith still works. Uh, we are uh, thankful that she came through and blessed our souls. And this morning, we have a special treat. We have a sister Deanna Bay that's going to come and bless us. And she hails all the way from the big city of Charlotte, Queen City, to come and bless us and song on this morning. And so I ask that you will go ahead and prepare your hearts and your minds uh, to come and flow and worship, even though we may be virtual, uh, uh, experiencing uh, God and lifting up his name, that you will come and join her uh, as she lift up the name of the Lord and song. Listen, we have a good word this morning. I want you to like, share, comment, spread this word. The word this morning is defective but covered by grace. Defective but covered by grace. In a season and a time like this, it's so easy for us to look at all the bad that we have going on, look at all our deficiencies, uh, and we forget how good and how great God is in the gift of God that's living inside of our lives. And so I want you to make sure you share this word with your friend, share this word with somebody who may need to be encouraged and empowered on this morning, and let them know they may be defective, but they are covered by the grace of God. And so I that you all will come on into to the house of uh, worship with us as we come and lift up the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Once again, y'all go ahead and open up your hearts and your mind. Get ready for Sister Deanna Bay as she come forth and lift us up uh, in song on this morning. Come on into the sanctuary.
family, before we go into the word on this morning, uh, the sister just sung that there's power in the name of Jesus. And then she said that there is a name that's above every name. And so where you are right now, whether you're driving down the road, whether you're sitting in your living room, whether you're in your bedroom, can you just take about two or three good seconds and just lift up the name of Jesus? Can you just take about two or three good seconds to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who died for us, the one who gave us breath in our body, the one that is still keeping us, as so many have gone on to be with him or gone on to be wherever they are going, but you are still able to open up your mouth on this morning. Can we just take about 30 good seconds? Come on, family. Can we just take about 30 good seconds? It don't matter. Let your neighbors hear you. Let them know that you are serving the king of kings uh, in the Lord of Lords. Can we open up our mouth on this morning? My God, and give us the glory simply for being who he is because he is an amazing God. He is an awesome God. He is all seeing, all knowing, and all powerful. And for that, we are grateful and thankful on this morning. We are grateful and thankful on this morning. We have come to a time and a place in life uh, where individuals, they know church, but they that's about all they know. They, they know how to do church, to dress, to look good. Uh, but we come to truly lift up the name of the Lord. Well, y'all watch this with no strings attached to it. That there's no shame attached to it, but you can just freely open up your mouth and let the world know, I serve a man. My God, is I'm not preaching the household this morning. Uh, I serve a man who is good to me, better to me than I have been to myself. Uh, we come to truly lift up the name of the Lord on this morning. Uh, I'm not going to hold you for those who have your Bibles as you go with me to 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, we'll be reading verse 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We'll be reading verse 9. I'm reading from the ESV. And verse 9 says, I'm going to read just partial verse 9. It says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Our God and Father, we come simply just to tell you thank you. We thank you on this morning for being who you are. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for your love. And now we ask that you will come and sit down and dwell with us just for a little while. We ask that you will pour out some fresh anointing from heaven. Oh God, that it not only rest and move and abide in this place, but that it travel through every technological channel and touch your people well and they need me. Even if they are looking to watch this sermon, oh God, when it comes Wednesday or Thursday or Friday, we ask, oh Father, that you will come and sit in that midst and wrap your arms around them, oh God. We're trusting and believing in you to show up and to show out. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It says that my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. If I can leave with you a title for the word on this morning, it will be defective but covered by grace. Defective but covered by grace. Uh, there's a story of a water bearer in India who had two large pots. Each one hung on the end of the pole as he carried it across his neck. Uh, one of the pots uh, had a crack in it, and while the other pot was perfect, and it always delivered a full portion of water when the man went down to get water to take it home. Uh, at the end of the long walk from the stream to the house, the crack pot always arrived halfway full. Uh, and for two years, this went on. Day after day after day, the man will go and get water. He would carry the two pots on his neck, and one pot would show up half full that was cracked, and the other would show up full of water. And for two years it went on, with the bearer delivering only one and a half pots full of water to his house. Of course, the perfect pot was proud of his accomplishments, uh, perfect for which it was made. Uh, but the poor crack pot was ashamed of its own imperfection and miserable that it was able to accomplish only half of what it was made to do. My God, we're going to go somewhere in just a little while. Uh, and after two years of what is perceived to be a bitter failure, uh, the pot uh, that was cracked spoke uh, one day. Uh, it spoke to the water barrel one day by the stream and the crack pot said, I am ashamed of myself. And I want to apologize to you. 
I have been able to deliver only half of my load because this crack in my side causes water to leak out all the way back to your house. The crack pot said, because of my flaws, you have to do all this work and you don't get full value from your efforts. Uh, the bearer said to the pot, did you notice that there was flowers, my God of Zion, uh, on your side of the path, but not on the other pot side? That's because I have always known about your flaw. Y'all come on and catch up with me. Uh, and I planted flower seeds on your side of the path. Every day while we walk back, you water them. For two years, I have been able to pick these beautiful flowers to decorate the table in my house. Without you being just the way you are, there would not be these beautiful flowers to grace my house. Family, I want to speak Amen. a message to those of you who find yourself plagued by the spirit of defectiveness. Uh, to be defective is to be imperfect or to be flawed. And can I submit to you that it is so easy for yourself and for others to find flaws in your life than it is to see the good and the gifts of God that's living inside of you. Uh, the world has grown accustomed to amplifying the flaws that we see in people. Uh, it is the very reason why people seek to receive cosmetic surgery to enhance various parts of their bodies. Uh, it is the very reason why people can point out uh, the one or all of the bad things you have done, but fail to mention any of your good. It is the very reason why folks can celebrate you doing your accomplishments, but will hang you on the cross after one mistake. Flaws are detrimental because they overshadow and smother something that is good. A flaw is a mark, a fault of other imperfection that mars a substance or object. And anytime something is flawed, it's considered to be uh, not functional, uh, not being able to function at its full capacity. Anytime something is flawed, uh, it is considered not to be able to fulfill its intended purpose. Uh, anytime something is considered to be flawed, uh, uh, sometimes it's not looked at as worthy of being killed. Uh, sometimes when something is flawed, uh, uh, its value uh, diminishes and uh, it's not valued more than si a simple piece of trash. And if you allow a flower, flowers will cause you to uh, have you to think that you are not good enough. Uh, I said if you allow it, flaws will have you to think that you are not good enough. And the longer you think that you are not good enough, you will find yourself bound by the spirit of comparison. Uh, and the longer comparison lives inside of you, the more you decrease your very own value. Uh, there is nothing more dangerous than finding yourself comparing your gifts, skills, and talents and beauty to somebody else. Uh, to the point that you not only forget who you are, but you fail to see the beauty within yourself. You fail to see that you are wonderful. You fail to see that you are amazing. You fail to see that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You fail to see that, that the gift of God that's inside of you, amen, is not worth it to be seized by any and everybody. You fail to see that your time is precious and not meant to be spent with everybody. You fail to see that although you may be flawed, you are imperfectly perfect. I said, you fail to see that although you may be flawed, you are perfectly imperfect. I want to suggest to you that your flaws can blind you until you're unable to look past your imperfections. Uh, I want to suggest to you that your flaws can blind you until you're unable to look past your scars. I want to suggest to you that your flaws can blind you into, amen, you can't look past the scars from your past mistakes and the hurts caused by other people. Your flaws will cause you to feel as though you are inadequate and as though you are not enough. Uh, but can I tell y'all, Marissa Donnelly stated, this is your reminder that you in your skin and your natural state is simply being or enough. You don't have to shape or change. You don't have to be perfect, pushing away every mistake and blemish and bruise. You don't have to beat yourself up from past mistakes, from the times you lost your way, for the way you doubt, even when you know doubt is filled with lies, you are still enough. Somebody needs to hear this on this morning. Not only are you enough, but you are greater than your flaws. I said, not only are you enough, but you are greater than your flaws. And in the words of bring down, you're in, you are imperfect and you're wired for struggle, but you are worth it to be loved and belonging. The crackpot was ashamed 
of this imperfection. The fact that it lacked the ability to fulfill its intended purpose and bring back a full pot of water. And there are many of you on this morning that are ashamed of yourself because you feel as though you are not fulfilling your God-ordained purpose. That you are, that where you are right now in your life is not where you intended to be. Because by now you should have been walking closer with God. By now you should have gotten over that hurt and that pain. By now you should have been free from your guilt and shame. For someone you feel that you have not been able to fulfill your full potential. But can I encourage you on this good Sunday morning? Because just like the part you have been focusing on your flaws, without realizing that with your flaws and all, God can still use you. I said with your flaws and all, God can still use you. He still has purpose for your life. With your flaws, you can still have the ability to make an impact in this world. For the man spoke to the God. And he said, did you notice that there was flowers on your side of the path? But not on the other part side. That's because I have always known about your flaw. Uh, and he said, I, I planted seeds on that side of the road. So, so as we walk home, uh, and as the water come out of the, your pot, as it come out of your crack, as it come out of your imperfections, you are worrying all along the way. Uh, can I empower you on this morning and tell you that God knows all about your flaw? He knows where you are weak. He knows where you're strong. He knows what you desire. He knows what you need. He knows your every deficiency. He knows every imperfection. He knows every piece of hair on your head. And while you're looking at how perfect other folks are, and the fact that they're fulfilling their intended purpose, God is using you in spite of your flaws to water that which he has planted. I don't know what this word is for, but flaws and all, you are a picture of water. And everything that goes out of you, everything that it touches, is bound to grow. Thank you. 
overcomer by the grace of God. God said, I still can use you. He said, I will use you to change the nation. I will use you to change hearts and minds. I'll use you to get your family back together. I'll use you to save souls. I'll use you to lay hands on the sick that they shall recover. I'll use you to speak into the earth and everything that you speak will cause it to change. I'll use you to cause the devil to tremble and run. God said, in spite of your flaws, I still got value. I still can use you. And the gift that I place inside of your life shall come to pass. But you're covered by the grace of God. I said you may be defective, but you are covered by the grace of God. You are covered by the grace of God. We spend so much time trying to be perfect. We spend so much time trying to make sure we cross every T and dot every I. We spend so much time valuing the opinions of people. I want, I want to deliver you on this morning. My God, I'm sorry. From the opinions of people. I said I want to deliver you on this morning from the opinions of people. For the ones who say you're not good enough. For the ones who say you, you, you don't got what it takes. For, for the ones who say you'll, you'll never get that job because you don't have enough education. For, for the ones who say you'll never be able to fulfill that, that position because you ain't quite got it yet. For, for the ones who say you always gonna stay right here and, and you should just get comfortable right there because you don't have enough to move up. For the ones who try to dictate what God has placed in your life. To tell you that you, you, you're not good enough to preach, you, you're not good enough to sing. You're not good enough to do X, Y, and Z based on what they see. But while man looks at the outside, I said, while well, my man looks at the outside, God looks at the heart. That bearer knew the crack that was inside of that pot. He, he knew that every day he went down to get water and to bring it back to the house and it would never bring back a full pot. He, he knew that, that, that it, it leaked and dripped water all the way down to the house. And because he knew it, because he knew that the prop was cracked, he, he said, I, I still got a way to get glory out of you. I still got a way to pull something out of you. And while the pot, the crack pot was looking at the other pot and said, he, he can fulfill what he's supposed to do. He's intended to bring back a full pot of water. But, but I can't fulfill my intended purpose because I, I, I'm defective. I have a leak. I have a crack. But the bear said, I, want, I always knew that you had it there. And because I knew that you had it, I planted flowers on the side of the road. I stopped by to tell somebody that God knows where you hurt. He knows where you are defective. He knows where you are weak. And because he knows, he said, I'm going to put some things in place. That, that, that even though you feel like your purpose is not being fulfilled, even though you feel like if you feel like if you're not working out your God ordained destiny, He said you're doing it all alone. Why, why, why you looking at the outside and trying to figure out and see that, that I'm fulfilling what you called me to do? You don't even know it, but 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 you you look at yourself as defective, but that's somebody that's looking at you, and because of the way that you keep going, because of the way that you keep pushing. Because of the way that you keep striving, somebody else is looking and they are empowered and strengthened by you. And all the while, you're beating down on yourself because you feel like you're not good enough, you're not doing enough. And the whole time, you're encouraging somebody else that's weaker than you. That's saying, because they can do it, guess what? I can do it too. Because they keep pushing, guess what? I can keep pushing. God knows where you are defective. But that doesn't stop him from getting the glory out of your life. If that's you on this morning. And you said, Pastor, I, I'm struggling. The harder I try, it seems like the harder it gets. And I just simply want to just give up. My best is not good enough. 
I just want to stop and encourage you that your, your best has nothing to do with God. Because even if we was to give our best, it's still no comparison to what he can do for you. I said, even if we were to give our best, it's still no comparison to what God can do for you. So when you feel like your best is not good enough, all I'm trying to tell you is God can still use you. He can still find a way to strengthen and encourage and empower you. When you feel like you're not good enough, can, can I just say, he will meet you right where you are. The same way the bear planted the seed on the side of the road because he knew that the pot had a crack. He, 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 he was still able to get beautiful flowers to decorate his table at the house. God said, I can still use you. My God is up. I can still use you to empower somebody, to encourage somebody, to, to strengthen the nation, to be a change. In a time where we receive water down the word, when we receive prophecy for a whole hour, for all we can get is if you turn around and shout three times, he said, I can use you in a world like that to truly go and be able to change somebody's life. If you have been bound and struggling on this morning and you've been trying to do it all by yourself, can I, shall I introduce you to the man who will meet you right where you are with every crack, every hurt, every pain, every guilt, every shame. He will meet you right where you are. I want to offer Christ to you that you may give your life to him on this morning. That no matter where you are in life, he will meet you. If you are an alcoholic, a liar, a cheater, a stealer. No matter where you are, who you are, God has the power to not only change you, but y'all watch this, to use you. I said he has the power to not only change you on this morning, but he has the power to use you. If that's you and you want to give your life to Christ, I just, I just want you to repeat these words after me. Father, forgive me for my sin. Create in me a clean and a pure heart and renew and restore the right spirit within me. Jesus, I believe that you died and that you rose with all power in your hands. Today I proclaim unto the world that you are the Lord of my life. If you just repeat those words, you are saved. And if that's you, I want you to type it in right now so we can lift you up, so we can celebrate you. Come on, if that's you, I want you to type it in so we can lift you up, so we can celebrate you on this morning. And while we are lifting you up, the Bible said that the angels in heaven are rejoicing. You don't even know, but you just started a block party in heaven. I said, you don't even know, but you just started a block party in heaven. If that's you, type it in. If you're watching and you said, I gave my life to Christ, but I, I backslid, I lost my way. That's all right. God is married to the backslider. He will meet you right where you are on this morning. If that's you, I want you to be me. Father, forgive me for my sin. Create me a clean and a pure heart, renew and restore the right spirit in me. Set me back on the right track. Set me back into relationship with you. That I may walk with you each and every single day. And be what you have already desired for me to be. If you just repeat those words, you have rededicated your life. If that's you, I want you to type it in this morning. Come on, I said if that's you, I want you to type it in on this morning. So we can celebrate you. So we can love you. So we can encourage and empower you. If that's you, type it in. And family, before we depart from one another, I want to pray with you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. And now, God, I ask that you will look down on each and every single individual. May 
name by name, oh God, and one by one. But those that are battling with the spirit of defectiveness, that all they can see are their mistakes. All they can see is their flaws. All they can see is their imperfections. Some that are battling with low self-esteem. Some that just they, they demise the way that they look. That when they look in the mirror, that they're not happy. That when they look in the mirror, they are disgusted with what's looking back at them. With those that are broken, my God, of Zion on this morning. And they just feel like their best is not good enough. God, I ask that you will come down, that you will sit down, that you will wrap your arms around them, that they may feel your love, that they may feel your compassion, that they may feel your grace and your mercy. Wherever they may be weak, oh God. Wherever they may be weak, oh God. I ask that you strengthen on this morning. Mentally, oh God. Emotionally, oh God. Guard the hearts and minds of your people. Strengthen, oh God, and uplift on this morning. Father, we give it all to you. We lay it down at your feet. And we ask that you will come and suck with us, oh God. That you will let us know, oh God, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. That you will be with us even to the end of the earth. God, I ask that you will come and sit down with those of us who may be bound by our past. I ask, oh God, that you will break every chain. And I will see that look at every day. Oh God, destroy every yoke. Set your people free on this morning. Free from guilt, free from shame, free from Bind our open wounds. That you will cover us, oh God. That you will keep us alone. And I ask, oh God, that you will surround us by good people. Surround us by some folks who say, I, I, I know that you that you lack that you're weak in this area, but when you are weak, I will strengthen and help you. That we can walk this thing together. That we may be what God has called and desired for us to be. Lord, we thank you. God, we praise you. We lift you up on this morning. I ask that you heal every word. Jesus, heal every word.
And if he knows your name, my God, that means he knows your imperfections. That means he knows your flaws. That means he knows where you're weak. He knows where you're struggling. He knows where you need help. He knows everything about you. And because he knows everything about you, he will cover you in ways that he don't cover other people. He will protect you in ways he don't protect other people. He will handle you the way that you need to be handled. He will handle you the way that you need to be handled. I don't know who this word is for, but I just feel, feel the Spirit giving it to me before I leave. As bad as it may hurt, as bad as it may hurt, Sometimes you got to leave some, some people. Sometimes you have to leave some places. And sometimes you have to leave some things that don't handle you the way that God has called you to be handled. I said sometimes you have to leave some people, some places, and some things that don't handle you the way that you need to be handled. For the water bearer could have easily thrown the pot away and went and bought a new one. That would have done his job and he would have been able to bring back two full pots of water. But look how he handled it. Look how he handled it. In spite of what you've been through, in spite of what you've done, in spite of what you may be doing right now, still use you. Not only can he still use you, he knows how to handle you. And so I encourage you on this morning to lay it at his feet and let him be absolute total and complete control over your life. Let him take control. Or you can visit us on our website, www.royalchapelnbc.org. That's www.royalchapelnbc.org. You can submit a prayer request for standing and proxy to pray for you on this morning. If you wanted to see what we have going on to get involved, feel free to do it if you want to connect with us. If you desire to give, you can do so as well. If you feel like although you've been watching virtually, that this is the place for you, this is the ministry for you, we're waiting here for open arms. But whatever you need, we're standing here for you. We love you. God bless you. We pray that you will cover, keep, and protect you, your family, and your friends as we continue to go through such a troubling time as this. But I'm encouraged on this morning because I know that he still holds all power in his hands. We love you. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you until we see you next week. Until we see you next week, we love you in the grace of God.